I do want to take you to Washington, where the president just spoke moments ago to reporters on the South Lawn as he's heading to Mar-a-Lago for the weekend. Let's listen to the president of the United States. I have no idea about the Mueller report. I'm going to Florida. We have meetings with the five Caribbean leaders. That'll be at Mar-a-Lago. Uh, we have a lot of other meetings set up for this weekend on trade. We have a lot of talks with China. And a lot of things are happening. We'll be doing it from Florida. And uh, a lot of very important things are happening. Yeah. The Democrats have very much proven to be anti-Israel. There's no question about that. And it's a disgrace. I mean, I don't know what's happened to them, but they are totally anti-Israel. Frankly, I think they're anti-Jewish. Yeah, we're being very, very strong on the border. Uh, the number is enormous of people that we've captured, people that we've apprehended, but uh, we're going to take care of it. We are being very, very tough at the border. Uh, it's just a continuation of the same witch hunt. They know it, and behind closed doors, they laugh at it. Uh, it's just a continuation of the same nonsense. Everybody knows. They ought to go to work, get infrastructure done, and get a lot of other things done instead of wasting everybody's time. I can't hear you. I know nothing about it. I've never heard that. I've never heard about it. If Robert Mueller is presiding over a host, well, we're going to see what happens. It's going to be very interesting, but we'll see what happens. Uh, there was no collusion. There was no obstruction. Everybody knows it. It's all a big hoax. It's, I call it the witch hunt. It's all a big hoax. So we'll see what happens. I know that the attorney general, highly respected, ultimately will make a decision. There won't be, and if there is, It'll only play to our advantage. There you have it, the same refrain that we have heard now for uh, about 675 days from the president since the Mueller probe began. Once again, the president this morning in anticipation of this report that has Washington uh, uh, waiting. Uh, the president says uh, continuation of the same witch hunt in his words, no collusion. He did have praise for the Attorney General, uh, William Barr, who has a lot of power, certainly, when he gets this report. He'll be the first one to get the Mueller report, remember, then he'll go through it and determine what Congress sees and ultimately what the public sees. Uh, Sarah Westwood is with us. Kara Scannell is with us. Uh, Sarah, I believe, yeah, you're at the White House. So, look, he took a few questions, not, not a ton, uh, and I want to get to what he said about Democrats and uh, Israel and Jews in a moment, because those were pretty shocking remarks. But just on this, what struck you? Well, President Trump linking the Democratic House probes to the Mueller investigation, that could be part of his strategy moving forward, because Washington is holding its breath for the special counsel's investigation to be over. But Democratic House investigations are right now just getting started. This week alone, the White House indicated that it will be resisting Democratic congressional requests for documents related to President Trump's communications with Russian President Vladimir Putin, White House counsel Pat Cipollone making the argument that the courts protect presidential communications with foreign leaders. House Oversight Chairman Elijah Cummings also said yesterday that his committee, the Oversight Committee, has evidence that several senior administration officials have been using personal email, private messaging services to conduct official business. And Jared Kushner, the president's son-in-law and senior advisor, has been accused of using WhatsApp to communicate with foreign leaders. So those troubles for the president are going to continue long after the conclusion of the Mueller probe. The president speaking to reporters just now, as we just saw, downplaying the prospects for impeachment, even though Democrats right now are controlling these very expansive probes into the president's conduct, Poppy.
Kara, uh, looking at the president's remarks there again, saying I have no idea, you know, what the about timing on the Mueller report, but again, just calling it a witch hunt, call, saying no collusion again. When multiple courts, appellate and district courts, have upheld the legality uh, of, of the probe, right, and the, and the scope of the probe, um, he did have praise though for for Bill Barr, who's got a lot of power here, the Attorney General. That's right, Poppy. I mean, multiple courts, this has been challenged, and they've all come back and said that the special counsel was legally appointed and this investigation is legally sound. Uh, now, Trump did have high praise for Bill Barr there, and ultimately this decision comes down to what Bill Barr wants to do. When the Mueller investigation is complete, Mueller will give the report that's confidential report to William Barr, who's the attorney general. William Barr will then notify Congress, the House and Senate Judiciary Committees that he has the report. And he will also have to tell them under the regulations if there were any disagreements or any moments where DOJ overruled what the special counsel's office wanted to do. That could be about a charging decision or a subpoena or something else. And then this is where it will get interesting. So Barr said during his confirmation hearing that he will then make a summary or create his own report based on the Mueller report, and the White House has an expectation that they will get to see that. Uh, they will be allowed to assert executive privilege over certain aspects of this. And so the president now having a lot of praise for Bill Barr, this is where the decision comes to Bill Barr. He will then submit that report to Congress. He is not committed at any point during his confirmation hearings that he would make the report public. That is something that lawmakers have expressed interest for. The House voted unanimously for the public distribution of the Mueller report. So we're going to get into some legal and political grounds here where there's going to be a lot of battle work here of what we're going to see. I mean, the report today, if it happens, will just be the confidential report being delivered. There's still a lot of waiting game to find out what's mm -hmm. in it. But we're, it would not be surprising if we see the White House come forward and put a positive spin on the report and highlight what they will learn through this process of executive privilege, uh, whatever information they glean from mm -hmm. it, Poppy. And we're looking at the president. These are live pictures at Joint Base Andrews. Uh, he just took Marine One there. And again, he's headed uh, to Mar-a-Lago for the weekend for a series uh, of meetings. David Chalian, a uh, few points that I want you to weigh in on, but just first, the president sort of continued to refrain here as Washington is anticipating the Mueller report. Yeah, it's, it's a really interesting sort of dichotomy that's on display here, Poppy, right? Because here is somebody, the president, who has consistently been completely confident in his position, no collusion. He is he believes wholeheartedly uh, that he should be cleared, and yet he still is, uh, throughout this week, making sure to try and keep the attacks up on Mueller. You this guy appointed by a deputy who gets to write a report. I was elected by 63 million people. Uh, he's still keeping up the attacks, uh, even though he... he is trying to express complete confidence that he'll be completely cleared. Uh, that those two things don't always seem in concert to me. Yeah, I, I don't think I don't think they are in concert, David Chalian. Uh, I don't want this to go unnoticed. What the president said. I'm going to quote him here about Israel and the Democrats. Of course, this on the heels of with a one tweet sort of sweeping change of U.S. foreign policy for more than 50 years, uh, naming Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. It doesn't change anything, but it's a very significant statement. He said, quote, the Democrats uh, have very much proven to be anti-Israel. I don't know what has happened to them, but they're totally anti-Israel. Frankly, I think they're anti-Jewish, David Chalian. I mean, that is an absurd statement on its face, but I do think what the president is doing here is exploiting what we saw to be a real divide. Remember, just a couple of weeks ago, we saw yeah. this uh, inside the Democratic caucus, inside the Democratic Party. Uh, they are not lockstep on how they uh, deal with the politics of Israel, the, the U.S. domestic politics of Israel. And there is a divide in the party. And so what I think you see the president uh, doing there is trying to exploit that divide in the party between those who are just sort of lockstep pro-Israel, no matter what, uh, and, and those in the party who express real reservations about that being the United United States position and and in the case of Ilhan Omar uh, you know obviously using language that she has had to apologize for that her colleagues in the House Democratic caucus has sort of rebuked her for uh, so he's playing into that divide that we've seen on display but to call the Democratic Party uh, anti-Jewish as a flat-out statement uh, again to me seems just absurd on its face yeah it is Thank you very much, David Chalian, uh, Kara Scannell, Sarah Westwood. We appreciate it. Joining me now is James Clapper, former director of national intelligence. Uh, director Clapper, I really appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Thanks, Bobby.
All right, let's talk about the Mueller report. You just heard the president discount it. Uh, but again, uh, it, it's been upheld in the legality of it uh, and, the, and the scope of it by multiple, uh, multiple uh, judges, multiple courts. Um, you said when it is finished, whether that's today or a month or two from now, it may be anticlimactic. Why? Well, I uh, was reflecting back on when, when this all started, and I remember saying uh, on this network that uh, it was my great hope that the Mueller report would ultimately remove the cloud over the country and remove the cloud over the presidency. I don't think it's going to do that. That was probably mm -hmm. naive on my part. Uh, I think it's not going to be satisfactory probably to either proponents or opponents of uh, President Trump and will be the end of, uh, you know, that phase of all this, the Mueller investigation itself, but, uh, you know, this is, it, it, it will continue uh, either in the Congress or I think uh, perhaps more ominously for the president in other courts, notably the Southern District of New York and the state of New York.